it's time. I'm gonna start. All right, so welcome everyone. So we are ready to start the award ceremony for the Marco Frascari Prize, uh, winter 2022. So we had 26 uh, wonderful entries and um, I guess a wonderful process with the jury this morning. But before we begin and I introduce our jurors, I'd like to acknowledge that our Carlton campus and our school are located on the traditional and unceded territory of the Algonquin people. So this year competition invited students to uh, narrate through drawing different micro narratives and micro stories and to do this through a combination of hand drawing uh, and digital drawing through various forms of hybrid uh, representations. Uh, this prize was endowed in 2013 by David Azrieli to honor the legacy of our lead uh, and former director, uh, Marco Frascari. So and I would like to take an opportunity to introduce uh, each of our jurors uh, who deliberated uh, this morning uh, on the work. So we're very pleased to have with us Neil Hobhouse, who is the founder of the Drawing Matter Archive in Somerset, UK, is a collector of architectural drawings and models. And he established the Drawing Matter Trust to explore the role of drawing within architecture. He curates exhibitions and writes about buildings, landscapes, and museums. He's a former governor of the London School of Economics, trustee of the Sir Johnson Museum and the Canadian Center for Architecture in Montreal. Um, Suzanne Ewing is Professor of Architectural Criticism at the University of Edinburgh in Scotland and Director of Zone Architects. Her publications include Visual Research Methods in Architecture, co-edited with Igea Troiani in 2021, and Architecture and Fieldwork from 2011. She's also co-editor of the award-winning journal Architecture and Culture. John Cook is a young professor at the Azrieli School of Architecture and Urbanism. He was co-founder of Griffith Rankins, Rankin & Cook in 1985, now GRC Architects. John has extensive experience in the design of cultural, institutional, commercial, and educational projects, including projects such as the Public Archives and National Library, Riddle Hall, and Queen's University. Adriana Ross, is a young professor at the Israeli School of Architecture, so one of my colleagues, and um, her research, teaching, and original work focus on the translation of meaning from past tradition to a contemporary context, incorporating social values. Her work on the creation and preservation of ephemeral structures is published in international magazine Domus. She holds first place and honorable mentions from local and international architectural competitions. So I'd like to thank the jury, you know, for uh, reviewing the works in advance and this morning for a wonderful discussion uh, about the work. Um, so I think we're going to go ahead and share the screen, Sean, if it's possible, so we can start um, from uh, our third prices. So I think there was, uh, you know, amazing consensus um, between the jurors. So, and because of that, uh, you see that things turn out a bit different from what we anticipated. So we have two uh, top three entries. Uh, and the award is $1,000. So I guess I'd like to congratulate Thompson Kong Duyen. And I believe Neil will say a few words about this piece. Um, well, we, we, all of us, uh, love this drawing, uh, or this this pair of drawings, and I think that for me personally, uh, it was the, um, the 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 bravery of tack tackling something very very uh, personal to the to of, in uh, Thompson's life, um, uh, so kind of uh, so. Um, fearlessly and without um, compromise. So it, it, it making something very, very public uh, out of something that by 
your own admission was uh, e extremely personal and quite, and in a certain way, quite quite painful. And you articulated the the conflict beautifully. Um, and there was a there was a, um, a wonderful correspondence between the text and what we saw in the drawings. Thank you very much, Neil. Yes, we're gonna go to the next uh, third prize. So this is by Jeffrey Kali, and uh, Dr. Susan Ewing will speak to this piece. Well, well done, um, Jeffrey. I mean, I think what is wonderful about this um, set of drawings, not really crown land, um, which is investigating this sort of, you know, really charged landscape, which is um, excluding um in a very kind of profound way and the investigation um oh i'm sorry it's sort of keely um <laughs> uh, and um and, and i think what is is wonderful so it's sort of a journey it's a, the drawing is a journey um we read it as a, as a kind of fieldwork activism um, and so very much enjoyed that sense of um the drawing being an investigation being part of this idea of journey settlement thinking about the traces thinking about the the inhabitation that may or may not be permissible and what it would be to sort of have to have these temporal moments. And I think what's so enjoyable about the set of drawings is that they, um, they take, a, they're about settling and regathering. Um, and we have a sort of map of the journey at the top. There's a kind of um, more of a sort of um, taking place over time, over a number of days, the, the 21 days that you can, um, you're allowed to be, to be sort of settled um, and then there's the sort of the map of the territory with the, the sort of tones on the left and this lovely idea of quilting and the, and the sort of occupation being about this sort of assemblage of um, inhabited, I suppose, with a very strong textile sort of um, uh, kind of uh, notion. Um, lovely coloured tones. I think that very much um, works across all the three drawings. There's a sort of abstraction about the grid, which is obviously to do with that um, territorial claim to the land, which is at play with that much more fluid um, fabric of the, the quilting. So there was a lovely kind of um, temporal inhabitation, but, but worked through in quite a, a, a kind of controlled and poised, beautiful way. Well done. Thank you very much, Suzanne. And Kelly is with us, so congratulations. I'm not gonna put you on the spot <laughs> having to talk about the piece, but well done. Um, I guess we can go to the second prices. Let's see which one we're gonna start with first. So, and it's $1,500. So this one, um, congratulations to Anya Romanowska. And I believe, um, is John gonna be talking about this one? Am I correct? I think he's muted. Oh. I'm muted now. I hope hope you can hear me. Yeah, we were all of us were drawn to this. I mean, for, for some simple reasons and some or more complex ones. It's, um, I mean, the prize invites a kind of linked narrative of three drawings, and although not hand drawing is not an absolute requirement, this is one that really seemed to be come from the hand. Um, you know, that said, it's it's really quite intriguing and it, it uh, to use a, I mean, Suzanne described it, uh, you know, in the context of world making, that the drawing invokes a world and um, it makes you simultaneously of things observed and things known so that we see use of the conventions of section and elevation and view and three and perspective at the same time as it makes use of kind of knowledge and thought about natural processes and time and geology that are taking place at a totally different time scale i mean the geologic time scale the pollution time scale the fact of observing um <clears throat> at one moment so it's it somehow com it totally depends on being a drawing. It's not an illustration or a photograph. It's a drawing, which is a kind of thought piece, um, as I say, that, that uh, simultaneously presents us with things known um, as well as things observed. Thank you very much, John. So we're gonna go and congratulations, Anya. I think she's not here with us unless I'm mistaken, but 
let's go to the next one. Um, so this is also a um, second prize for Sharid Saad. Congratulations. And uh, Adrian is going to speak about this piece. I'll, be, I'll begin uh, with saying congratulations to all of you. The work is remarkable and was really difficult to choose uh, and select the, the finalist. Uh, and thank you to Federica for organizing this special, incredible uh, event. Uh, so we all agree that this, uh, this is another uh, really uh, exquisite work. A poem sets of discovery through author's lenses during her, her or his, I'm sorry, uh, journey in Dubai. Um, the examination of the implication on the surrounding areas from micro uh, climatic and materiality changes are powerful. And yet there is this subwell composed of light and shadows appearing and disappearing through the walls and street of the district as a reminder of time. Uh, the choice of the use of shadow as a character who shapes, determines the soul, as the author mentions, uh, of the district, it's poetic and compelling. It recalls the surrealist work of Giorgio de Chirico, The Enigma of a Day, 1940, where he explores the effect of the shadow to enhance through the harsh shadow cast by the statue, a sense of an anxiety. The work is old and yet new, traveling through time where the light is in the being and the shadow is the reality in question. And congratulations on the remarkable work, well deserved. Thank you, Adriana, for a wonderful read and congratulations, Shair. I hope I pronounce your name well. I, uh, I see you are here with us. So, yeah, thank you for being here. Um, and as you can see, we have had two top, um, I guess, two free third prizes, two second prizes, and we also have two top first prizes, uh, which is wonderful. So we're going to go to the first of the top uh, first places, which is $2,500. Uh, and uh, Corina Amariore. Uh, congratulations. You know, I'm reading the names for the first time now. I didn't even know who, who were the students behind the work. So for this piece, uh, which is titled The Trash Tower, uh, Suzanne Ewing uh, will speak about the evaluation. Well, congratulations, Karina. I mean, it's been a, this has been a wonderful process. I have to say, you know, the fact that there's, you know, two prizes in each means that there's been such a high quality of of entries. Um, I mean, this is a wonderful um, sort of panoramic immersion. It's a very, very beautiful drawing. In some ways, this isn't a micro story, it's a sort of mega story. Um, the impossibility of managing the great Pacific garbage patch. Um, and I think, you know, there's a sort of impossibility in the drawing, you know, what to do, how on earth do we um, imagine a world which we might be able to manage that literally and there's a sort of um, a, a speculative possibility that maybe sort of these towers um, that slightly mythically are uh, mechanisms to to somehow clean up um, this mess that we've made in the world um, and I think and I think what's very beautiful about the drawing um, is that it's it's kind of that the urban and the oceanic um, have got an uh, a sort of merging together. There's a sort of net of the ocean, which sort of has some reference point, I think, to sort of work of Super Studio, the idea of a, a netted surface of the earth that we somehow have kind of um, some, some way of understanding our world in that way, which we occupy, cities might be there, occupations, things might move around. But this great sort of abstract blooming of, and yet very, very concrete stuff that's sort of invading the drawing um, is sort of, you know, at play with the, the sort of um, slightly mythic city, possibly Manhattan. There's just a hint of the, the bird um, addressing the, um, uh, you know, the sort of the, the, great, the great towering finger in the sky from, from Manhattan. Um, and I think it's something about the, um, the sense of having a, the panoramic technique of the drawing, this move between foreground and um, background, the, the proximity of the, the kind of what may be part of the trash tower in a sort of fairly speculative sense, a slight sense of plan, 
of, um, of elevation and of these pieces that move in and out of the landscape that I think is very successful. So these sort of blooms and wastes um, are very interesting. I think the computerized quality um, and the sort of specs um, give it almost a sense of uh, an engraving, you know, quality of very um, almost pixelated marks that play with that idea of the the small marks that are, are repeated over and over that become representative of the, the cosmos in some way. Um, and it, I think it feels that it's, it's a it genuinely is a world being made, even if it's a, a world which raises a question that's very, very complex and difficult to um, understand how we can even envision, envision it. But maybe through the seagull, we've, we've got some sense of compassion, I suppose. So thank you and well done. Thank you very much, Suzanne. And we look forward to also disseminate these drawings and the images and make sure you have a chance to look, um, you know, nicely into it in terms of the quality of the details, uh, which is not really easily, um, you know, appreciated on Zoom, unfortunately. So I guess we're going to go to the last um, prize, which is also a first prize. Yeah, and it goes to Devon Moore, who I think is with us right now. And this prize will be announced by Neil Hopehouse. Um, well, congratulations to, to uh, Devon. This was a, 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 a series of drawings that we, all of us responded to, which is not to say that in fact, the choices weren't very difficult and very sort of closely argued when, as we went through this entry of, of you know, of 25 different, submissions. Um, I think that uh, what we were all responding to was, um, first of all, that, they, that there was a, a, a real uh, question here, and it was a, a, about scale, and it was a question, it's a question uh, about the world around us and about drawing. Um, and uh, what, what, uh, I admired was the, uh, how should I say, that, that you, you took what might have seemed a, 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 there was a kind of playful choice of subject, which you then approached in a, a very rigorous way um, to produce something which must have been incredibly complicated to produce. So there was a, there was a tension there which I enjoyed and I enjoyed very much um, uh, in, the, in the film um, and which left me uh, genuinely wondering about the answers to the questions that you raise. I, I see that in your text, you very carefully don't come to any conclusions and I think that's correct, but you've sort of raised the level of discussion in a way that I found very, very stimulating and thank you. Thank you very much, Neil, for that. And uh, I guess thank to all the jurors, you know, for you know spending time with the work. It was wonderful to see the 26 entries uh, in the competition, really the quality of the work uh, for me was really remarkable. It really speaks well to all of the students who have entered work uh, for consideration in this uh, competition. And, um, you know, I sort of feel like uh, it, it, for me, it would have been a very difficult choice. So I'm, I'm very glad that we had four wonderful jurors who had that role uh, in figuring out which are the, I guess the, you know, the pieces that will be deserving uh, the most attention in, in this um, uh, competition. Uh, I also think like um, it's wonderful to see, you know, these forms of hybridization. And one of the things that we discuss uh, with the jury um, just before uh, we concluded the was the fact that it would be wonderful in the future to uh, to really indicate you know which are the mediums and techniques that have been used in which way you have hybridized uh, your drawing you know the notion of hybrid drawing was really part of the legacy of Marco Frascari he definitely wrote uh, a lot on hand drawing and that was because obviously you know in I guess architectural culture we've gone through a major uh, shift from a hand drawing culture that was still my culture when I graduated from architecture school and I still teach hand drawing, but we hybridize a lot uh, to, into a digital uh, world. And so it really was reflecting on, on this transition and really understanding 
um, you know, what does that mean uh, to make this shift and what is critical and relevant about hand drawing, which is a practice that itself has evolved a lot, obviously, uh, over, you know, centuries. And at the, at the same time, uh, precisely because of that long duration of hand drawing, you know, to really try to understand was, what is it uh, that hand drawing wants to be today in the context of a digital culture. So I think, um, you know, your work uh, speaks to all of these ideas and perhaps in the future, it will be great to know, um, you know, which are the different software mediums and techniques that you have gone through uh, to arrive at these um, conclusive pieces. Also, what's fascinating uh, to me, uh, looking at the legacy of Marco Frascari, was also that relationship between words and images. There was a kind of thoughtfulness, uh, you know, an incredible thoughtfulness in his writings and a kind of a precise attention in, in which he was speaking about drawing with attention to um, what he used to call a material imagination and really, you know, understanding how our words and our ideas uh, speak with the drawings and allow the drawings uh, to really speak and convey messages. Um, and I guess uh, in conclusion, well, I'd like to congratulate all the students who um, placed uh, in this competition and of course the jurors for their time and for being with us. I hope that the next time we'll be able to do this in person and maybe invite uh, Suzanne and, and Neil to join us at the school soon into the future. So thank you all. Uh, I don't know if the critics have any final comments you wanna, I guess, share with the students in general about, uh, I guess, the work overall or anything else like, I, I, I simply wanted to say thank you for uh, including me amongst the uh, jurors and it was a real pleasure and stimulation to have participated um, and I looked forward to seeing where everybody takes their work um, from this point. Thank you Neil. Completely I just echo that I mean what a lovely invitation to receive so thank you Federica and the school and I mean it's brilliant to have a prize like this which really just focuses on drawing and in process and I just think it's wonderful it's the sort of thing I think if we could all architecture schools should have something equivalent it's so thank you so much for the invitation and there was lots and lots of I think in the the all those 26 entries that these are moments of you could see sparks of small creativity so those who maybe didn't aren't in that final six there's still some real sort of glimmers of things there that we'd love to see them developing thank you Suzanne uh, Adriana or John? John? I mean, just to I mean, echo what everyone has said about th thanking you for their, the presentation, but it is, uh, as Susanna has been outlining, it's a great thing for a School of Architecture to have, which is to recognize the drawing as a, as a thing in itself. I mean, we've looked at all of these drawings. They weren't drawings of projects necessarily. I mean, although there was projects work in the background, um, you know, it really is a clear statement of the value of the, the drawing as a thing and as a way of thinking about the world in itself. Thank you, John. Um, I would like to thank the school for inviting me to be part of this uh, remarkable event and I would like to um, thank the students uh, to be part of their uh, beautiful journey they have been taking through the, the, the last years and the things that are coming ahead of them in, in the future. So thank you very much. Thank you, Adriana. Steve, is there anything you would like to comment on? Um, again, thank you, Federica, for pulling this all together and Shen for your, your hard work. Um, I guess I would just say that um, I think Marco would be um, would be very proud. Well, thank you for that. Yeah. All right, so I guess this concludes the, you know, uh, the announcements uh, of the process of uh, the work of the jury. And I thank you all again very much. Indeed, thank you, Sean, uh, for all your support in setting this up. It was essential and it made everything very easy for us. So thank you for that. And, and thank you, Maria, as well, for being with us and helping us to disseminate the news of this wonderful uh, work. So we'll make sure you all receive a link 
um, so you can read uh, about the awards and see the work again. So thank you very much. Enjoy thank the, you all. the day. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. Bye.